Will there ever be a greater mark than Gary Moorcroft's grab in 2001? When you think of the name Gary Moorcroft, any AFL fan will immediately associate it with his epic screamer. In 2001, Gary Moorcroft took what many say is objectively the best mark of all time atop of Brad Johnson. A fully stretched Moorcroft atop a 6 foot Brad Johnson, peaking at around 11 feet in the air, Gary Moorcroft looked poised to do a complete backflip off his opponent's shoulders. But what made this a better grab than the others, and will it ever be beaten? There's been some classic grabs over the years, the best of which can be seen in Extraverse's video, the top 50 AFL marks of all time. A common theme for these grabs is their smoothness and how aesthetically pleasing they are. Take a look at Andrew Walker's mark in 2011. The perfect jump and sit, locking the legs on either side of his opponent's head without using his hands to help him climb. Actually, Sampy's mark in 2004, an unbelievable vertical leap to essentially stand on the shoulders of his opponent, landing gracefully on his feet. There are also marks such as Jeremy Howe versus Sydney or Gary Ablett Sr's grab, which obviously take extreme athleticism to pull off. However, as the ball spills loose as they come to ground, it devalues the mark. Ablett Sr's mark came in at third place on Extraverse's video, yet I would argue that it shouldn't even be counted as a mark in the first place. Although Moorcroft's mark is considered the second best by Extraverse, Many agree that it is actually better than Sean Smith's mark of 1995. The logistics of this mark make it special, with a player completely committing to the grab, no matter how dangerous the attempt. Most great speckies involve some kind of hang atop their opponent, yet Moorcroft springboards off Johnson backwards. Look at the positioning of Moorcroft at the peak. There's almost no way to land safely. Dermot Brereton said that this side-on shot of Moorcroft's mark will be on pub walls for the next 100 years. It's almost hard to believe that this mark was even possible. The arch of Moorcroft's back, nearing 90 degrees as he is fully outstretched, demonstrates how perfectly timed this mark was from this kick, which came from Scott Lucas on his right, a man who is known for essentially having no right foot capabilities. If the ball was any lower, the mark would have been taken on Moorcroft's chest and not looked as smooth. Any higher, Moorcroft wouldn't have been able to touch it. It was serendipitous. After Moorcroft comes down looking absolutely destroyed by the impact, we hear Brereton say he's winded himself as he sucked the air in from the stratosphere when he was up there. And to many who weren't watching the AFL at that time, but who have seen this mark, probably believe that this was the extent of his injuries from this mark. But it doesn't end there. The impact Moorcroft sustained from landing essentially ended his AFL career. So even though he was able to play out the rest of that match, it was eight months later where he discovered that he had actually fractured his own hip from that landing, which effectively slowed down his career, especially after playing almost an entire season after the fact. Two years later, Moorcroft would retire from the AFL, although he was still able to play amateur football for a few years after. Moorcroft was essentially his own victim of his athletic prowess. And he was still actually able to take a fairly decent grab in the NFNL, which looked pretty similar to his 2001 classic. So how can we be sure that this mark will never be beaten? And what will it take to beat it? There's obviously some players in today's AFL that have the ability to take some soaring marks, such as Liam Bryan and Jeremy Howe. Yet none have quite challenged Moorcroft's 2001 grab. Liam Ryan took a pretty similar mark atop Max Gorn a few years ago, but this goes back to what I was saying before. The height is not quite the same, and the height of the kick doesn't allow for an outstretched mark either. So what about other sporting grabs? Anyone familiar with the NFL will know of Odell Beckham Jr's fantastic grab for a touchdown in 2015. The consensus is that OBJ that day took the greatest NFL mark ever. And if you'll notice, it's strikingly similar to Moorcroft's grab. Of course, you're not allowed to jump off your opponent in the NFL, but OBJ did take it with one hand. Can you imagine a similar style mark to Moorcroft's outstretched with one hand? Granted, an American football is much smaller and easier to clutch in the one hand, but I think I've seen Taylor Walker take a grab one-handed where the ball essentially sticks to his palm like it's nothing, like Kudafiti style. So that would be the only type of mark I can see taking the throne from Moorcroft as the greatest AFL mark ever, and that's if that's even possible. Regardless, we can sleep easy knowing that we have seen a moment in the AFL which exceeds what everyone's thought of what was athletically possible in this game. I've been Modal Soul Media. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe. Peace out.